Hey, welcome back everybody. We are on video, what, like 39 or something? I don't know, but I've been going hard on this. <laughs> hard on. Uh, it's 11.20 and we're going to be talking about input. So what in the world is input? Well, I'm gonna be telling you. So let's write a program if I was to ask you a question. Do you need help advancing your coding skills? Check out my new program, Code Breakthrough. Code Breakthrough offers hands-on learning with Python and data structures, algorithms, and interview challenges. With a supportive community and regular new content, Code Breakthrough will help you get hired or advance your career. For a limited time launch special, use the link in the description to get 20% off your subscription. See you there. So like, let's say I said print and in here we just put something like, hey, what's your name? All right, awesome. So we run this and it gives us the output, which sometimes it looks funny. Run it twice, all right, there we go. Hey, what's your name? Now, if you want to actually get this data from input, and this is where things get magical, you just say input, and this is actually going to return what they type. So we'll say name and assign it this function call. So running this, what's your name? We can type in Caleb and hit enter, and the program ends. So what do we wanna do now? We can actually output this name. So we can say print and pass in name. So now when we type in the name, it should repeat it back to us. So we say Caleb, and we get Caleb in response. So here is the response. Now this is really, really cool. I know it seems simple, but this is the foundation for building complex applications. Because now, each time we run the application, it changes because we can put in a different input. And we're actually really far into the series to not have seen any examples of a dynamic program. A dynamic program is a program that each execution is different. We have different paths in our program and it's all built upon input. It can be input from, in this case, the terminal, or we could get input from a database or a text file or whatever it might be. We can use this input just like any other string. So for example, we can do concatenation. We can say hello, comma, and then the person's name. So you just put a plus there and run it here. It says, hey, what's your name? We put in Caleb and it says, hello, Caleb. So imagine you sign into a website and it says, welcome, Caleb, or whatever your name is, probably something like, welcome, nerd, <laughs> roasted. And in that situation, it's dynamic based on what name you put in when you signed up. Well, this is how something like that is done. It's done with concatenation using some variable that contains your name. We can also get numbers. So for example, we ask another question. Let's say we print and we say, what's your favorite number? And now we say fave num and we get it from input. Running this, hey, what's your name? Let's go through with the input. We put Caleb, what's your favorite number? Seven. And it appears to be working, although we're not doing anything with the number. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna get two numbers and add them together. So we're gonna say fave num two and that's also going to come from input. And then we'll do another print just so they know what to do. Give us another number, like so. And then after what we're gonna do is we're going to say print and we're gonna add these numbers together. Fave num plus fave num two. So we're gonna do some basic addition. You know, let's say they put in seven and 10, we want to give back 17, except this isn't gonna work and you'll see why in a second. So we run this, hey, what's your name? We say, Caleb, what's your favorite number? Seven, give us another number, 10. And it says 710, what? That's not how math works. Well, math with strings works that way. It is actually concatenating these two values. That's because if you take a look at this input function, whenever we say input, you can see that the return here is going to return a string. That's what this arrow here is. So because the data that is stored in these variables are strings, when we say plus, it defaults to concatenation. So we've talked about how to convert numbers to strings, but now I wanna talk about how to convert strings to numbers, and that's what the whole focus of the next video is. We're gonna be talking about type conversions. So yeah, if you don't wanna be lame sauce, you probably wanna check out the next video. I will see you there. Well, I'm not actually gonna see you, but yeah.